Lisa from My Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and welcome back for those of you who regularly watch my videos. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today. For this video I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Typically on my channel I make soap because I'm a soap making channel. But I do actually make and sell a lot of other products. And so I thought, as I was in the midst of restocking a lot of things that I was getting low on, that I'd pop a video on, and you might be interested in seeing those as well. So the thing that I'm making today is some bubble bars. Now I really love bubble bars. I'm one of those people I really love a bath. I much prefer a bath to a shower. And I like nice bubbly water in my bath, so I much prefer a bubble bar to a bath bomb. Now, I must admit, one of the things I find when selling bubble bars is I quite often find that customers don't really understand what they are because they, they're still quite a relatively new product. Most people understand a bath understand a bath bomb. You pick the bath bomb up, you run your bath of water, plop the bath bomb in, and it fizzes and whatever. But with a bubble bar, I do find that I have to sort of explain these and along my packaging I have instructions on how to use them. Essentially these are a bubble bath, so what you do with this is you run your water and as you're running the water you crumble this bubble bar in the flow of the water. And the more that your water agitates the bubble bar, then the bigger, the fluffier, the more bubbles that you get. I guess just like normal bubble baths. You put it in, don't you? You swish it around and get lots of lovely bubbles. And smell wonderful. So that's what we're making today. Now, I know some of you are going to say, well, can I have the recipe for that? I'm not going to add the recipe into the video or the description. And the reason for that is that the original recipe that I've based my bubble bars from is a recipe that I paid for and therefore it's a recipe that's sold so I have no rights to just openly give that away for free. Now I have actually tweaked the recipe, there was nothing wrong with the original recipe, it's just that I always like to make a recipe more personal to me. So mine is slightly different but to me it's not different enough to warrant saying it's my recipe but what I will do is I will put a link in the description below where I got my original recipe and they do a course and everything and the details how to make bubble bars and also as well you'll find there'll be several different types of recipe now for me when I make my bubble bars I make them with a hydraulic press and so therefore there would be a different recipe for bubble bars that you're going to press compared to bubble bars that you might mould by hand or maybe scoop out and there's all different types of recipes so depending on what sort of process you want to use you would need to think about how you or which recipe you would want to choose but as I said I'll leave a link in the description box below if you do want to make your own bubble bars you can find a recipe which will be quite similar to the recipe that I'm using today. Gosh, okay then, we better get on with making them, haven't we? Come on, let's go and make some bubble bars. Let's start making our bubble bars then. Now, I may have mentioned this in the intro or not, um, but if I didn't, I'll just go over it again, is that I'm not giving out the recipe for these bubble bars on my channel purely because when I first started making bubble bars a couple of years ago, I did it by buying another recipe from somebody else. Now I have tweaked that recipe since to make it my own, but it's not wildly different to the recipe that I purchased. And as that's a recipe that you have to buy, it would be very unfair of me to just start giving it away free of charge. But what I will do is I'll put a link in the description box below of the recipe that I started off using and it is a great recipe. The only reason I changed it a bit is because I always do that. I always like to tweak recipes to make them my own, even if that's only a little bit. 
Right, so what we're going to have a look at is the types of things you need. I don't think that's a problem, you know, because some things are maybe a little bit different to your normal soap making supplies. And then we'll have a look at how we make them. So first thing I've got here is a whole batch of dry stuff. Now, when I make my bubble bars, I tend to make sort of quite a lot of them at the same time. So what I do is I master batch all my dry contents and I do this for my bath bombs as well. Now master batching for something like a bubble bar or a bath bomb is different to master batching oils for soap. You can't tend to do a whole great big bucket of master batch dry stuff and then pull off what you need because you'll find some things will separate and sink and it's very difficult to stir them all together. So what I do when I'm master batching for say like some bubble bars and the same with my bath bombs is I will master batch each lot that I need into a bag. So therefore what this does is I will make sort of like 10 or 20 of these bags up at the same time so it's much easier to weigh out 10 or 20 of them rather than every time I want to make one go and weigh them out individually okay so this is my master batch of all of my dry stuff that I need for my bubble bars and it's basically a combination of bicarbonate of soda cream of tartar um, some corn flour and SLSA as I said, if you want the recipe that I originally started to use, I'll leave a link to it. You can get that from in the description below. Okay, so I keep that nicely sealed up in an airtight container. So I have them in bags and then in an airtight container. Then it's easy for me when I'm on a bubble bar making spree to just empty that. And all of these will be sieved as well nicely. And I find that if I've sieved it, at the time I put it in a master batch it, as long as it's kept nice and dry and sealed, you don't need to sieve it again. So that's great for our production. Okay, so those are my dry ingredients in there. Then we need, not surprisingly, some wet ingredients. Now, the wet ingredients that we're using, I'm just going to go over sort of some of the stuff that's, let's say, a little bit more unusual to basic soap making. So I have some vegetable glycerin some polysorbate 80 now the polysorbate 80 will act as an emulsifier so it'll help with your oils mixing with your water in the bath so you don't get a layer of oil on the bath and it'll help with the fragrance oil and it'll also help with any colors mixing in with the water so you don't have staining on the bathtub so it is important the polysorbate 80 um, and the cocomidopropyl betaine, <laughs> one of those big old long worded things. Um, now this is basically a surfactant. It's basically will add extra bubbles to your bubble bar. So that's what we're looking at with that. Also in addition to that, we'll be adding some oils. So you could use sort of any oils you really fancy. I use um, a combination of a few different things, but yeah, you can use rice bran oil, olive oil, coconut. I don't know if I'd use coconut oil, but <laughs> you know you know the idea, avocado oil, sweet almond oil, whatever takes your fancy, cocoa butter, that sort of thing. Right, okay, so those are the things. Now I'm just gonna get all those weighed out. bars that I'm doing is black raspberry vanilla. I do tend to give this a little little sort of just whisk blend up just because I find the polysorbate 80 can be a bit it's a bit 
more of a thicker gel so I like to make sure my solution here is all nicely blended together and then my last oil or butter I'm adding there is I've got a nice dose of melted cocoa butter going in there Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this together. Now, you're probably not going to be able to see the mixing. It's just a uh, just standard mix. I've got a whisk attachment. I find that works well with mine. I don't have a fancy KitchenAid mixer or anything. I sort of refuse to buy one for my bath and body making products. So I've got a nice one in the kit, a nice mixer in the kitchen. This is just a cheapy, mine's called a Chef Lee. Amazon it wasn't very much and I'd rather have that and I use this for my bubble bars shampoo bars and all sorts and it seems to do the trick perfectly well right so let's get all this wet in with the dry Now my dry in there is quite mixed up anyway. I would have maybe given that a stir round if it was all separate. Okay, so I'm just going to mix it up. You're not really going to be able to see the mixing on here, but I'm sure you know what a mixer looks like. So I'm going to start off slowly. Depending on how wonderful your mixer is, you may need to scrape down the sides just to make sure everything's getting mixed in. Okay, so I'm pretty happy there that we're all nicely mixed in. Now I'm going to do these as two colour in my little bubble bars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split off about half of this mixture. I'm going to colour. Now I'm going to colour this using some lakes. Okay. Now with a lake we only need a small amount. You can get lakes or dyes. I don't want to go into the whole thing about lakes and dyes. You, if you're using lakes in your Bath and Body product you will need more of them than you will with a dye. The good thing of a lake is it's more colour fast so therefore with a dye you might find if you sell your goods at a market or something the dyes may fade in the sunlight whereas a lake will actually hold nicer. Dyes will colour your bath water better you know but I with my bubble baths I'm not looking for coloured bath water that's to me is more of a bath bomb type thing so I like the lakes. I still don't use very much so for example here I've got about a kilogram of mixture here so I've got my amount that I need. I want to make a purple now one of the things with lakes and dyes is they only come in a very few almost sort of like the primary colours really. There's a red, which isn't really red, it's kind of pink, isn't it? Blue, you can get two different types of yellows, but you're not going to get the myriad of colours like you get with a mica. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to get this in. And I can't remember if I told you how much I put in. Yeah, so for in this one kilogram of mixture, I just put in a small amount. So I've put half of a gram, so 0 0.5 of a gram of the Red Lake 27. And then I've put 0 0.1 of a gram. So I tend to use 0 0.6 grams per kilo of mixture. Okay, so I put in 0 0.5 of a gram of the red and 0 0.1 of a gram of the blue. Okay, now we need to get that mixed in. with my purple gloves and my purple jacket I'm quite happy with that sort of going for the black raspberry sort of so purple but not too blue purple so I like that color and can you see I have, I've definitely not gone for a really strong color if you wanted a stronger more striking color than that then obviously you could add a bit more but yeah the dosage ray that I used on those lakes um, as I said 0 0.6 grams of lake per one kilogram of mixture and I find works quite well scales over and I actually press mine using a bath bomb press and I've had a bespoke made mold made for my shampoo bars and my bubble bars and that sort of thing this cute little cloud so I'm just going to weigh each one so I set my mold on the scale and then I will do a scoop of the purple and then a scoop of the white up to where I need it and then pop my little lid on now normally I'm not jiggling around like this because normally I have my scales over there and my bath bomb press over here so I wouldn't normally be mucking around so much like this. Right, now my bath bomb press is a bath bomb press that we can get in the UK. I think it's very similar to ones that you can get over into in the US. I will leave a link in the description box for it below. It's great. Um, I use it a lot for bath bombs and bubble bars and all that sort of thing and it's one of those ones where you put the mould in and you've got like an, a hydraulic thumper, you have to have it with a compressor and then you just hold the buttons down and it goes down and you press thumps down on your bath bomb. Now this recipe was developed specifically for if you're going to press bubble bars and I'm pretty sure, although I've never used them, um, there's a lot of recipes on the website for, you know, what if you haven't got a bath bomb press or if you want to hand mold your bath, bath, your bubble bars, sorry, or if you want to do, you know, some of you make those sort of roll up ones, that sort of thing. So those are all on there as well, but it's a different recipe for each type. Okay, I made myself a little pusher again. I use this for bath bombs and bubble bars to just go in. Like that. Okay, so that just gives me my nice little bubble bar. Just like a bath bomb, go around and tap it. And then that will release the top off and the bottom. And there's my cute little black raspberry vanilla bubble bar. I'm going to go through and this batch that I've made a two kilogram batch and you know, I'll get quite a lot out of there so I'm just going to carry on with each one weighing pressing and unmolding one step 
forward and another back I will never try to fool ya I'm one heartbeat away from going mad Girl, when you're looking like that Closer, closer I'ma get closer to you Yeah, got me, baby Got me hooked on you once again little bubble bars so what I'll do with those now is I'll just set them aside for a couple of days and what I'll do is after sort of sometime tomorrow morning is I will just I'll flip them up onto their side so the air can get to them we're not very humid here so I just leave mine aside in a room and they're absolutely fine if you're in more humid conditions you might need to make sure you're doing it on a day when humidity is low or maybe if you've got a dehumidifier sort of similar things to bubble um bath bombs but they're not don't seem in my experience don't seem as sensitive as bath bombs okay so i'm just going to set these aside and they will then get really really hard and we'll be able to package them Let's have a look at how these bubble bars work, shall we? So I've just got a small bit of a bubble bar. It's one of the sort of leftover bits that I have. I don't want to use a whole bubble bar in this small base. I always think it's a bit weird when people do a demonstration of things and they put this large bath bomb and go, look how foamy it is and everything. And they're just doing it in a small basin. So I've just got a small bit. So with a bubble bar, remember the difference is, I'm probably not even going to use all of this. I'm just going to break a bit off of my small bit is you want to actually crumble it into the water okay so it's not like a bath bomb so crumble it into the water as it goes and then you can froth your water up and obviously if you're in a bath depending on how hard your taps are with it's nice bubbles coming through to look at that lighting a bit better I think okay, so as we can see here we've now got lots and lots <laughs> of lovely bubbles for a lovely bubble bath and just like a bubble bath itself then these will should stay throughout your bath not like a bath bomb where you'll get a tiny bit of fizz and then they'll just die but also as well it just feels lovely on your skin the scent is really lovely and the bubbles feel really soft and soothing and really nice for your skin and then as I'm mucking around with these bubbles, I'll just leave you with a few pictures of some of the bubble bars I've currently got in the shop. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It'd be great if you let me know in the comments if you'd like to see things other than soap on this channel, as it's always useful to know what people like. Thanks for watching, everybody. Happy soaping!